What if I were to suggest that you play a key role in the awakening world? And that you are watching this because you have heard the call. We can start right now by opening our hearts and minds. Welcome to the awakening world. Good morning, everybody, and a happy Sacred Sunday to you. I am your host. I'm Love Coach Scott D. Thomas, and welcome to our Sacred Sunday edition of The Awakening World. And I see so many wonderful friends. There's Wowza and Kieran Eisenberger and Bonnie and Roger and Eleanor and Jeffrey. Pamela Butters is in the house. Sam Sparrow. Uh, and of course, those of you who haven't turned your cameras on, welcome to all of our friends in the Zoom room and do let us know where you are geographically today. I'm still in Sedona, so I'm actually using my Illuminate Film Festival Sedona Red Rock background, um, which I kind of like. Um, I know a lot of you were on our show last night. It was really a beautiful show. And today is the closing day of the Illuminate Film Festival. I'll be moderating the final panel. I'm excited about that. I wanna welcome those of you who are watching on Facebook. I'm really grateful for the Sign Network, which is run by John and Summer Raymer. Love you, John, love you, Summer. Um, and thank you for getting us out to as many as 100 Facebook groups and pages. Um, and if you're watching on Facebook, we wanna invite you, come join the Global Peace Tribe. We're a wonderful group of people. Um, we do shows three times, sometimes more. Last week we did four um, online shows. Um, and it's a real community growing and building. We had our first retreat last month. We're planning more retreats for 2023. We come together and we are all kind of locking hands and raising each other up, raising our consciousness, raising our awareness. Um, like the video said, we're here to inform, inspire, and take action. And it's really easy to join the Global Peace Tribe. Just go to our website, which is globalpeacetribe.com, globalpeacetribe.com. And you'll see here where it says register for the fall season. That takes you to our registration page. And what happens is once you register, you're going to get the links to all of our shows for the rest of the year. Um, and as I mentioned, we do three shows every weekend. Um, last night's show was wonderful, all about the Illuminate Film Festival. And today's show um, is going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be um, meeting uh, a new friend, uh, Veda He. She is a truly next generation leader. Um, and one of the things that I really uh, want to start doing more and more in our show is meeting the next generation. It's great to have uh, our old friends like Marianne Williamson, who was on last night but it's the next generation that's really important too. So looking forward to meeting her, learning about the great work she's doing, her inspiration about life, and also her beautiful music. Um, and we also have back with us Beamy. Um, and uh, Beamy is of course, all about health and healing. And um, she's gonna share some more knowledge and information and wisdom. We're gonna talk about LifeWave. Um, and some of, so many of our Global Peace Tribers now are having great results with it. So we're excited about that. I'm gonna learn more about that. Um, because it is the Sacred Sunday show, 
we're also going to really have some interaction with all of you. So turn on your cameras. It's okay if you're in your pajamas. Um, <laughs> turn on your cameras because we want to interact with you today. Um, and we're going to take a look at uh, a new slideshow that Sam Spiro put together from the retreat. That's going to be kind of fun. But let's start with slowing down, which is true for myself as well. Um, I'm going to leave this on a very short meditation. Then we'll go to beautiful Brother Omoshar for some music and then move forward with the show. So unless you're operating a motor vehicle or a bicycle, <laughs> I invite you to close your eyes and just let my voice gently guide you and start with a breath. Let's start with conscious breath. And as we breathe, we go more and more into ourself, into that beautiful universe of you. And as you're tuning into yourself, let's just take time to notice what's going on inside my beautiful body temple. How did I sleep last night? Have I had enough food this morning or movement of my body? Have I done a spiritual practice yet? Enough water? What are my emotions? What are some of the feelings that I've already experienced this morning? Remembering that all emotions are welcome. All feelings are part of the human experience. There's no bad feelings. There's no negative emotions. There's just ones that are more comfortable than others. But they're all welcome. They're all helping to inform us as to what's taking place inside of our body temple, inside of our experience of life. So I invite us all to just send love to any part of the body where there might be discomfort, love to any part of us that might be having a challenging or uncomfortable emotional response to something. And we can also celebrate if we're having comfortable feelings, if we are in good spirits today. Whatever is alive for each and any one of us is welcome here in this container, this beautiful group that comes together. And as we prepare for Thanksgiving, a time of giving thanks, we're gonna focus on gratitude today. And so I want to invite everybody to think of something that you're truly grateful for. Something you're truly, truly grateful for. And when we open our eyes, which you can do now, and we look at each other, if you choose to go to gallery view, I'll go to gallery view and we can see all the beautiful souls that have their cameras on. Oh, look at all of our friends that are here. Um, and as we go to Omar Sharfer's music, I want to invite everybody, put into the chat box, for those of you in the Zoom room, put in the chat box what you're grateful for. And likewise, for those of you watching on Facebook, what are you grateful for? And I'll do my best to track as many of those as I can and share them. And for now, we're going to put the focus on beautiful Brother Omar Shar for an opening song. Oh. 
Love is all there is So put your hand in mine Keep open your heart We are love divine is all there is love makes you feel good love is perfect love is all there is anything less is nothing love's for everyone love is in everyone love is you you are love love is truth is in everyone Love is truth, truth is love, love is, love is, love is. not a dream love's all there is love's what we live for and this love lives in you touching you and guiding you love is in everyone love is you you are love love is truth is in everyone Love is truth, truth is love, love is, love is, love is, love is all. Twinkle, love it, Omar Shar. Uh, you never know what's going to come out. That's a, that was a unplugged version of a, a rocking song of mine, and I thought I'm going to play it unplugged today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh well, that's such a beautiful message. It really is. It's, it's just the um, it's what we're here to learn to love. It's just live it. And thank you, Amushar, for the beautiful ways that you remind us and help us with that. Always my pleasure. Namaste. We love you. Uh, yeah, I'm going to keep the camera on you, Amushar, for a moment, because we are going to talk a little bit about the Global Peace Tribe Retreat. And again, I everybody is included. So I don't want for the people who couldn't make it there to ever feel, as we're talking about it, um, not connected, uh, because everybody, like Eleanor Joy, for example, you are such a big part, and Jeffrey, and uh, now I'm going to start naming people and feeling bad because I didn't name certain people, but you're all a big part of, of who we are, and we're growing together. And the retreat was a big step forward for our Global Peace Tribe, um, that we were able to have a successful retreat. So many people came from all over, uh, as far away as Canada. Um, and uh, Sam Sparrow, 
uh, was he kind of became our unofficial photographer. I'm going to bring you up along with Roger and Bonnie. Roger also took a lot of photos. Um, and uh, Sam has put together a, a fun little montage. Uh, I've got you on camera, Sam. So this is just a short minute and a half montage that Sam put together for us. I think you'll all, all enjoy it. Good job, Sam. Thank you. Man, that was awesome. <laughs> and, and it was a great choice of music, just the right amount of time. So anyway, a big thank you, Sam, for putting that together. And one of the great things that happened was um, a lot of healing took place. So many people, uh, and I'm seeing it again in the chat box of people's gratitudes, uh, a lot of healings took place of coming back together, just being in community together physically. Um, but then also physical healing took place. And a big part of that was when we discovered how many people were already using LifeWave. Um, um, and so uh, even though Bimi wasn't there at the retreat, she's who introduced me to it. And I was very, very skeptical at first, extremely skeptical. She was like pulling at me. It took me months to even start using it. Um, to send it to me twice, um, but uh, I'm impressed. I, my energy level is really, really good, and I haven't had a healing story, but we're going to hear a few healing stories from some of the people that are with us today, and just a reminder, um, pop in the chat box, raise your hand if you would like to share a little bit about your healing experiences at the retreat with or without LifeWave. Um, put your hand in the chat box or send me a private message and I'll bring you on board. But Bimi, I'm gonna turn it over to you for a moment just to kind of, for anybody who doesn't know what we're talking about to introduce what, what LifeWave is all about. Thank you. And uh, it's awesome to be here with everybody. <clears throat> um, Scott and I have known each other so long and he's always got such a juicy group of people. <laughs> Wherever he goes, he's putting together great uh, gatherings. I remember in L.A. when we were uh, doing a lot of things there, there were always these amazing gatherings of people. <laughs> yeah, that's true. God was always there. <laughs> so, um, you know, awareness, which you talked about in the beginning, is so important in our evolution. And besides our spiritual evolvement, or the awareness of what's available out there coming through in a new way in um, how we heal and how we can take care of ourselves. Because, you know, we've <laughs> come out of kind of like the dark ages of medicine and what's coming forward are incredible new technologies. And what I'm so grateful for, and, you know, of course, the show is about that, is that about three years ago, I found LifeWave. 
and uh, wasn't looking for it, but I had been researching a lot about what the stem cells do for the body because I'm getting older and I wanted to, you know, I'm on preventative and I'm always looking for how to do the next best thing. But LifeWave, and I'll get up into that in a minute, LifeWave is a company that um, its platform is to help people grow their consciousness in a healthy way and live in the best vitality and resilience that the human body can afford. And the co-founder and uh, owner, he actually prays before he goes into the lab and he has come out with and kind of brought, we don't know whether it's from the future, from the past, whatever, but he's bringing technologies forward that are unparalleled. He has over a hundred patents and the one that Scott is so excited about and many people on this um, Zoom are using is called the X39 stem cell activation patch. And this is patented, it's scientifically proven, it's clinical and thank you. And it looks like this, wafer thin and you just put it on your skin. Oh, that rhymes, thin and skin, how cute. <laughs> and um, what happens is the science is, you know, the patent, but I'll give you just the real quick version. You know, we're emitting light all the time, right? So when you put the uh, patch on, it's full of organic crystals like amino acids, salt, and sugar. And when you put it on, they get activated from the light coming from your body. And when that happens, it sends a signal back into the body and that creates a chemical, biochemical reaction. And guess what? Your stem cells start growing younger. And that's the very simple version of it. But just think about this. This is the way the body regenerates. This is when we're younger, this is why we're so vital and, and strong is because our stem cells are young, our stem cells are producing. And after 35, it's downhill, folks. <laughs> about 50% goes away of your ability. And then at age 60, it's about 80% gone of being able to create stem cells at all. So when you put this patch on and you're able to revitalize and restore and regenerate your body, incredible miracles happen. And you're going to hear some of these recoveries that people are starting to go through. And it's not the patch that's healing. I just want to be clear. It's the communication pathway because it's, it's like when you go out in the sun and the sun hits your body and it makes vitamin D. So when you put the patch on, the light from the uh, body hits it and then your body activates to make younger stem cells. And this is what I'm so grateful for because I have changed thousands of people's lives now. And every day I get phone calls from people thanking me, you know, oh, this turned around. I've been praying for this. I didn't know where to go. I wanted to get off my meds. So many things. And so I'm just grateful to be here. And I can't wait to hear from some of the people that uh, want to share. Beautiful. Thank you so much. And can you share, um, as I'm getting ready to bring on some of the people, but Sure, kind of um, a healing story that you've been especially inspired by, especially maybe as it relates to, because many of us are, you know, now senior citizens or approaching senior citizen age. What are, what are some of the things you've personally observed? Well, for myself or for other people? Either. Okay, well, there's so many. Um, I'll give a, and some of you have heard this, I'll give a brief uh, overview for myself. I had very bad digestive issues for over 15 years on enzymes three times a day. In two weeks <clears throat> on X39, off all enzymes. Not had problems since. My gums uh, were receding, uh, pockets getting bigger. Dennis said, you got to do this work. It took one year, but my uh, pockets went down from five, six to two and three. <clears throat> huge difference. And that was the only thing different 
uh, different that I did. The other thing is, well, there's more, but my skin is, is um, more youthful, more hydrated. It's tighter. I'm 73 years old. My energy is good. And um, I did a biological test and a chronological age test. And I'm 73. And I'm just going to skip to the bottom line. I had two tests done. And it shows that I'm 35 to 40 years old in my cellular age. And wow. that's since using the X39, because before that, it was uh, twice as high. So that's my story. And I've had people with rotator cuff problems, avoid surgery, couldn't lift their arm, couldn't bend it all the way, you know, couldn't raise it up complete motion now um, a woman who used to get shots in her spine um, that would deaden the nerves in her back and her spine because she has such pain and she would get these twice a year and then they stopped working and she was on and couldn't get off the sofa you know almost like bedridden she put the x39 on and in one hour she was jumping off the sofa and dancing and we have this on video, so I'm not making this up. And um, people have had nerves that have regrown that, you know, had gotten damaged in accidents, um, brain trauma, tremendous uh, results on people <clears throat> that are, um, you know, have hit their head or had a car accident, all kind of joint and neck pain that, you know, <clears throat> stiff, can't even move complete mobility. It just goes on and on like that. Um, I'm going to show some of the photos that you've sent me in the past. Um, and then we'll hear from some of the people in the audience. Um, but maybe, and it will bring up Atira first. But um, so here are some photos that um, are people who use the X39. Anything you want to add as I show these, be me. Yeah, so wound support and healing wounds and scars, whether they're recent or old, it just blows, it just completely heals it. This Look at this on the left, terrible accident, car accident in 63 days, completely healed. Amazing. Wow. And then uh, next one. Another scar related, um, you know, where they were stitched up. And usually scars and stitching and all that, and the scar will stay raised. This is uh, after two weeks, almost gone. Foot, and you can see the little patch is an example of the patch of the right hand photo. Yeah, so on the left, that was showing the stitch, you know, again, the injury. We have many, many wound support ones. So you get you get an idea of how it works. And this is a friend of mine, Beth. She'd had this disease for over 15 years, the left side. She's a health-oriented person, tried everything. It took her about uh, almost two months, but then her leg, that was after two months where it started healing, and it continued. You know, I, I've done over 500 shows um, since the start of the pandemic, and I don't pitch product on my shows. Um, and that's one of the reasons, I mean, Beamy reached out to me, I think a year ago, um, and it's taken a year for me to see enough results and see enough of my friends getting positive results to where I feel comfortable spending valuable airtime showing all of this. So I want to make clear, I'm not someone who just pitches products, especially for anybody who's watching for the first time on Facebook. Um, but because so many people that I care about have had great results, that's why it's like, okay, we all got to start using this. And it's so, it's incredibly inexpensive. Um, well, the, let me just say one thing. I One thing I kept impressing on you is that you're helping people raise their consciousness, but people need to know about what's happening in the health world because it, it is a major piece when you're elevating your consciousness, your body needs to elevate as well. And this is light therapy. This is in energy frequency. There's no ingredients in this patch. <clears throat> so this is right up our alley. This is exactly what we're looking for as we're accelerating and evolving. Yeah, beautiful. Um, I, well, I'm going to bring up Atira and then I'm going to bring up Karen. And we'll see if anybody else wants to share. But hi, Atira. 
Hello. Good morning. I finally got my time right. <laughs> now, where are you located? You're you're down in Tucson. I'm in Tucson. Yeah. I'm in Tucson. So I'm I'm uh, it's eleven thirty here. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I'm still in Sedona. I'm I'm caught in the oh. Sedona <laughs> vortex. I can't leave. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Tara, tell us your, your story, your experience. I will. Um, I, and I would put in a plug for, may I later, as we're talking about the retreat, I have some things on, that I want to share on that. Sure. You can share a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, all right. So I, I did meet Bimmy and, um, on Scott's wonderful show. And then at, um, when I, I can't remember what, when, but I've been on the life uh, wave X39 for about a month and a week. So about five weeks. And in that period of time, um, so for the last year or more, I haven't been able to sleep on my hips. I'm bone on bone due to a congenital thing. And it was really sore and I wasn't getting good sleep. So uh, after about three weeks on the X39, I realized I'm sleeping on my side again and I'm a side sleeper. So yes, Bimmy, thank you. Um, so, uh, and, and it's consistently continued that way. So the arthritis in my thumbs is less, it's still there, but it, it's, it's down. And um, hold on two seconds. So, being the type A personality that I am, I have a long list of what was happening to me. And I have all the numbers on this list as to how they've been reduced. Yes, thank you, Bimmy. I, <laughs> I know LifeWave sends one, but I, I really like it down. So my hips don't ache. My knees have not been bothering me. My digestive unrest, like Bimmy, has mostly decreased, uh, except when I'm really bad. And then my erratic energy levels, I've been able to write good consistently, at least for the last week and a half. And um, the scar tissue from an accident five years ago in my ribs, that, that feels less, because when I sleep on my side, I, I can usually feel it, and I'm feeling that less. So, um, whether or not it's the X39, but I'm no longer getting headaches that were related to the um, eye surgery I had uh, last December. So no more headaches. And my eyes don't even get that tired that I need a nap. So um, I, Bimmy, I would love to know where you got uh, I, that test for age. Please put that in the chat. I would love to know what age I am and uh, my... Uh, my lover the other day said, oh, my God, you've got the body of a four-year-old, 40-year-old, <laughs> not four, 40-year-old. So I, I'm pretty sure the X39 is helping in that. <laughs> if it can turn my white hair back to brown. No, yeah. it can do, it can, it can do that. <clears throat> we have many women where their hair turns back color. You will and, see and what I, happens. And I heard a, a, a testimonial where the guy who was bald actually started growing his hair again. I'm going, wow. So the, the only thing that I'm waiting for, and this might take a period of time, is that the um, bone cancer that I have keeps my hemoglobin really low. So I'm, I've got my fingers crossed that the X39 will, will boost that up too. And I'm also doing the glutathione patch. So anyway, it is kind of long, but overall, I can't. I really have a lot of positive, and I'll tell you, skeptical. Oh my God, poor Bimmy and Scott got, am I being turned on to cascading stuff? And no, no, it's not, it's real. So, and I finally have my first customer who um, can barely hobble on one knee when he gets down on a crouch, he can't get up. So we're gonna, and he started that yesterday. So we shall see how that goes. Awesome. Well, you're getting from the last time I talked to you have even more uh, testimonials. So it keeps accumulating, folks. The results keep going and going. I'm so happy for you, Atira. Thank you. Thank you, Bimmy. And thank you for all your help in getting me going. <laughs> you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Tira. And we'll bring you back on a little bit later to talk about the retreat. Yes. Um, you know, it's interesting. I don't want my hair to color change, but actually it is getting darker. 
Um, <laughs> the other day, uh, I mean, I you, you know I don't have the whole flow down, but it's like I don't know if you guys can see. There's actually dark Street. dark streaks beginning, and that was not happening there. But I actually wanted my hair to stay silver. I guess it would have been all over <laughs> yeah. the yeah. Yeah, I'm not pushing it. It's just <laughs> but, um, um, all right. Let's bring up Karen Eisenberg. I'm eager to hear what. Uh, hi, Karen. Hey. And thank you for always being. Thank you for always being one of our wonderful dance people, uh, oh, you yeah. and Jeffrey and uh, Eleanor Joy. I can always count on for moving to the music. So thank you for that. Oh, hey, I I, I know I'm no match to Eleanor Joy, but <laughs> <laughs> but we're having fun. This is great. Um, I wanted to express when. My first evening when I arrived in Sedona at the Hacienda House, where those of us um, were staying, I accidentally didn't see a step and I fell. And I fell down pretty hard. And um, I injured my right, just below my right big toe on top of my foot. Um, it kind of went like this, you know, in my shoe. And um, I thought, okay, and my friends um, helped me up and I hobbled into the house and it wasn't so bad at first, but that evening I could, I really had trouble sleeping. I had to take something. And then the next morning I ran into Bart and Bart said, let me give you a patch. And so he put it right on top of where I had been injured. And I want you to know that that pain totally went away. I thought, oh my gosh, I won't be able to go on hikes, to, you know, the vortex hikes and stuff. But I was pain free and I could go on any of those hikes that I chose to go on. So, I mean, I have an actual living testimony that happened right there. And I just received everything in the mail the other day and I'm going to be starting it <laughs> um, and i'm sure i'll have more to report so thank you that's some that's <clears throat> that's wonderful because um you know i just want to say that not everybody has results that quickly karen but we see about 50 percent of the people do i mean like that woman that couldn't get up off the sofa in one hour and your pain right away but I want you to know we recommend at least a 90 day protocol to get the full healing because some people will take maybe a month or two months and we never know. You'll get some results along the way, but the fuller healing definitely is, you know, three months or more. So thank you. Thank you, Karen. I am going to bring Pamela Butters up. She is such a wonderful new part of Global Peace Tribe. And um, Pamela, I love your music. She has sent me a couple of her songs. Wait until you hear this woman sing. Now, those of you who were at the retreat, you got to hear her do the Crystal Bowls, which was amazing. Mm -hmm. um, but wait till you hear her singing. And so we're now talking about having her come on as an actual musical artist for one of our Saturday night shows because she's got a great voice. Um, so... Um, Pamela, I'm so grateful to have you as a new part of Global Peace Tribe. And you also have uh, had some amazing success with LifeWave. Well, yes, gosh, all of it. But I, I must admit, it was so much fun to be with all of you. And when I say that I felt like I met new people, I didn't feel like I was meeting new people because they felt so familiar to my heart that I feel like I've known. It was really, talk about a Global Peace Tribe where I instantly felt so at home and it was such a joy to be among you. So yes, the, it was such a blessing, but I did have some funny, um, well, my experience, my mom was really incredible because her heart squeeze went from 25 to 57% which, you know, they said she had heart failure and it would never heal. So that was phenomenal. And I had shared that before. But what I'm going to share is my own experience because I was really pretty healthy and I started it, but I was at a twin ray retreat where they do the beautiful food that is served this vegan food. And it was so wonderful. And I'm thinking, man, this vegan food makes you poop like a racehorse. <laughs> I was thinking, what? <laughs> and then I got home and I didn't have my vegan chef anymore. 
And my friend who started at the same time called me and said, Pam, because I'm thinking, man, I'm still going and I don't have a vegan chef. I wonder what's up with that. Because it was kind of a, a beautiful thing. I um, didn't even know I was so full of it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, what happened is my friend called and he said, Pamela, have you noticed you've been going to the bathroom a lot since you started LifeWave? And I thought, oh my gosh, it's the patches. <laughs> and we both started laughing. And I said, well, gosh, I guess most people might have known I was full of you know, but I didn't <laughs> until I started um, LifeWay. But the beautiful thing about that is that when you have really good elimination, the rest of your system works so much better. And I've lost a lot of weight that I actually had been carrying like in my little pooch that I called it because <laughs> I'm older now. And uh, I, I, I feel so much lighter and freer um, and that's why I joined LifeWay was really because I was looking at more of the light aspect of it. And I truly believe that this is our medicine of the future because light is information and all we're doing is reflecting our divine light back into our body so that our bodies can do what they were designed to do and work at their optimum level. And also it elevates consciousness. And so that's why I have just been such a fan of LifeWave and I have seen you know, things happen over and over all around me. So I feel like it's a, a, a fun thing for me to do too, is to share the love by sharing the light. <laughs> and it's just those little crystal patches. And when I play them, I patch the pioneer and I play those bowls. I just had another person who had a sound bath the other day and he saw all kinds of colors. He wasn't, I, he, I didn't tell him ahead of time what would happen. And he said, I've never seen anything like this, but we're playing the pioneer tones and patching the pioneer that feeds the pioneer. It's really quite amazing. And it's the seed of the soul. And that first eye, instead of sometimes what we call the third eye, it's really our, our vision into who we truly are and how big we really are beyond just our physical body. But man, let's take care of these lovely temples we have. <laughs> Here, Pamela. So you, at night, you can actually put an X39 up here on your third eye and sleep with it and have uh, increased dreams. I, I, is that accurate? It's, well, I'm kind of getting off the subject, but they have more patches and one's called Aleveda and it feeds the skin and it specifically feeds the pioneer. It's an amazing patch. You kind of can add those a little bit down the track because X39 does 80% of what every single other patch does. And X39 is the stem cell patch and the stem cells know your priority. So they will triage to wherever your body needs it. And it'll be different for your body than it is for other people's. So that's why we always start with X39, but then there's some other fun ones that I love to use too. <laughs> yeah, you, you don't want, <clears throat> you don't want to wear X39 at night because <clears throat> it gives you energy. <laughs> And right. then you wouldn't be sleeping. <laughs> I've accidentally left it on a couple of evenings, but I I'm able to sleep through it. Okay. Pamela, thank you so much. You're it's welcome. just great to see you. You're a beautiful You're speaker. Welcome. I cannot wait for your for you to to do some yeah, music. It will be fun. I actually had written a song called Dancing Color and Light, and it is about sharing our love and our light and this life wave and light wave of love that we are as we're we're really starting to share that light all around the planet and you know all boats rise in the tide mm -hmm. thank you <laughs> Bimi. i know you got to go to another meeting soon so we'll just kind of wrap up this part of the show but there were a couple of questions um would you like to answer uh Vitahi's question yeah i did i asked her to get a hold of me um uh, because I can go into that more, but uh, let me just, um, she's, let's see, what did she oh, say that um, it doesn't conflict with any medications and um, you wear them usually during the day, the X39 is during the day, there are other patches, but like Pamela said, we just start with the X39, because it will 
give you a broad range of different benefits. And then we see if we need to add anything else. It does help with uh, blood pressure and the liver. It's going to take inflammation down. That's one of the key things that it does. And that's where a lot of pain comes from is inflammation. And I know somebody else had a question about the cost. And just real briefly, I'm going to give you a general idea. It's about $100 a month for a 30-day supply. You get a sleeve. It looks like this. And you get 30 patches in there. And you wear one a day and take it off and wear a fresh one the next day, 12 hours on and 12 hours off. Uh, so it's less than a cup of coffee a day. So it's pretty inexpensive. And you get a money back guarantee, a 30 day money back guarantee. So you really have nothing to lose. But again, uh, we have what we like to, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, recommend, wait a second, because I'm coming through a cough. That's why I'm having this congestion. I apologize. That's all right. Go ahead and cough. <clears throat> it's a um, a 90 day protocol. We have a special package, a wholesale package that you can get that. And uh, we can uh, talk to you about it later. I can help you if you're interested with that. And I did put a link in the chat to go to startx39.com. That'll give you a really uh, good overview and some testimonials. And uh, yeah. There it is. And yeah, so I've put it into the chat box. Um, this is a good way to learn more. Watch this video, go to this website. Um, and then if you want to order, text me. If you have more questions, text be me. And I've put um, uh, our information into the chat box. So. And thank you so much. I'm sorry I can't stay for the whole meeting, but I have another. <laughs> Uh, call scheduled. And I love being here. I, I look forward to coming back and hearing more testimonials. Absolutely. Thank you, Beamy. Thank you Thank for everything you. you do. Thank you for all the support you provide. Let's all, I'm going to go to gallery view. Let's all twinkle, Beamy. Look at all that twinkling coming your way. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye bye. All right. Ah. <sighs> Well, I think uh, it would be wonderful now to uh, introduce you to Vai Dehi. Um, uh, we met, actually, she was originally going to be on one of our other shows. I think it was the show that uh, was part of the Bhakti Love Reunion, um, and, and it didn't work out because she was traveling. But I was so impressed in talking with, with her. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about her while um, this is from her bio. She's a creative entrepreneur that loves to share spiritual knowledge and mantra to music and dance. She was born and raised in the bhakti yoga tradition. And so she has a love for mantra and hip hop and produces her own mantra based hip hop music with ancient Sanskrit chants. And we're going to listen to a couple of her, her pieces. Her vision is to bridge the culture of bhakti yoga into the world of music and festival culture. She's performed all over the world, um, uh, from Costa Rica to Northern California, all over. Um, and uh, she, for me, really represents the next generation. And I am a big believer in mantra and bhakti yoga. And so welcome to the awakening world. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's so nice to see everybody's beautiful faces. And honestly, I'm really impressed by what Bimi was sharing. Um, you know, oftentimes, and I'm just going to, this isn't necessarily what I wanted to open with if I were to introduce myself in this moment, but to kind of riff off of the subject we were just speaking on. Yeah. Um, oftentimes in the world of spirituality, there is this philosophy, you know, we're not this body, right? This is temporary. The material world is temporary. And this is what I've been told <laughs> my whole life. But I often think, well, if we're not these bodies and we're spiritual beings and we're here to elevate and to really try to integrate our karmic lessons, why not make this human existence the best that it can be and align all aspects of self 
And I always say, if we have this bhakti yoga philosophy, which is so evolved and advanced and elevated, why not excel in every other field of life? And so when I think about money, when I think about health, the physical body, right? Beauty, relationships. And so it's really lovely to hear about this uh, technology that is really in alignment with our principles of light and consciousness and to find ways to um, honestly continue nurturing our physical existence so that it's a match and a reflection for the evolution of our own well-being. So I just loved hearing all your stories. Um, and thank you so much for this program, Scott. This is really amazing. It's my first time experiencing it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's, uh, and you know, every show we do is is unique, um, but they all are part of the awakening world. And you've pointed, well, I loved everything you said, but I want to riff on um, the part about being in our bodies. Uh, you know, 20, 30 years ago, so many of my friends wanted to be out of their body. It was like, oh, I want this to be on my last lifetime. I want to, you know, and so they were taking drugs and doing whatever they could to get out of the body. Um, and the most of the teachers that I now am really impressed with that have been on the show, people like the Twin Ray, they're talking about it's being fully in the body. Ascension, evolution is not just getting out of the body but it's actually being as embodied in our bodies as we possibly can be, which is um, a really important shift from frankly, where a lot of baby boomers in the new age movement were at 20, 30 years ago. Um, maybe you can relate, because I know that you, you, you were raised um, in that field. And that's what I love about mantras, because through singing, through yoga, through uh, chanting, we come more into the body. We connect the body to, you know, it's not going up to heaven, it's bringing heaven on earth into these bodies. So anyway, I'd, I'd love to kind of hear your thoughts about that. Yeah, so... Um... So well said. It's, it is true that a lot of people uh, sometimes, uh, and I don't want to ever generalize, but it, it is a common theme that people are trying to renounce the body, right? To renounce material things. I remember um, when I was 17 or 18, and I was living in the women's ashram in San Jose, California. Um, I currently live in Santa Cruz in the Bhakti Yoga Ashram where I was raised and I was staying in the ladies ashram for some time. I was going to university there. And I was in the temple room, really, really just meditating and praying because I wanted to go to India to live with my guru. And I had been to India before and I, I just, I wanted to go back. And I was reading um, the Chaitanya Charitamrita, which are the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is an incarnation of Radha, the divine feminine and Krishna divine masculine combined. And this personality is like yin yang personified, if you will. Um, and it's really the divine masculine in the mood of his beloved, um, wanting to experience her love because she is devotion personified. Bhakti, the word bhakti means devotion. And I know this is a little detour, right? To kind of give a little background. And so I was reading the book of his pastimes and it was talking about desire. And in that moment, I realized, oh my gosh, it's not about rejecting or renouncing your desires. And this, the book was describing this, but it's about purifying your desires and aligning your desires with divine consciousness, with divine spirit, with the evolution of consciousness. And so I was having that realization and from then onwards, this particular realization became the foundation of so many things in my life from, you know, renouncing my own artistic abilities, my natural sensuality. A lot of people are like, you're so sensual. You're so exotic. When they listen to my music, they're like, it's so sensual. And I'm like, I'm not trying to be sensual, but it is a natural part of the feminine essence. And for some time I was trying to renounce it because I didn't think it was spiritual. I didn't think it was in alignment with what was being preached to me or the way that it was being preached at me or to me. And I've never been a person that could just like, you tell me what to do. And I'm Aquarius, I'm left-handed. 
don't tell me what to do. I'm a Scorpio <laughs> moon. I'm not going to listen to the patriarchy. I don't care what color robe you're wearing. Like, no. And so I've never really been able to just like take things and, and follow blindly. I've always been one since I was 12 years old to be reading the scriptures, reading the philosophy and trying to really understand it from my own heart. And so over the years, as I've continued evolving in, in this body, in this life, I've never really been able to be on board with renouncing the body, renouncing material things. And this is not the concept of bhakti yoga, actually. What my guru taught me, because he is a, a personified, you know, yogic being, he taught us that we offer everything we have to the divine, our actions, our success, our material existence, our efforts, our endeavors, our food before we eat, our, you know, setting intentions, right? Every step we take, we offer it to the divine. And that is what uplifts us and shifts our consciousness from the mainstream, you know, uh, constructs of this matrix, right? Of this world, which is every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Karma, AKA karma. Yes, that is the way this world operates. It's, you know, the plane of justice and the plane of karma. But in the spiritual world, in the spiritual plane, it, the laws that govern that plane are love. And every unit is a giving, serving unit. And the consciousness of every unit of that plane, which is a state of consciousness rather than a physical destination, which means that we can access it and ex you know, exist in that plane now, is a giving unit. And that is the whole point of bhakti yoga is, you know, in the Bhagavad Gita, which is like our Bible, you know, I'm sure raise your hands, right? If you've heard of the Bhagavad Gita, you've probably read a little bit about it, right? And in the Bhagavad Gita, it is said, just give, like abandon all of your external designations, dogma, creed, you know, all these things about your um, gender and, and just devote yourself to the divine. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's message was the same, you know, the inaugurator of the Kirtan practice, forget your caste, your creed, your gender, and just sing the names of God. And that is the premise for Kirtan is to sing the names of God without really considering anything else but the fact that through this chanting and through this mantra yes not only are we you know there's a beautiful song that we sing that describes the benefits of chanting the maha mantra which is uh, what Mahaprabhu, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave as the practice of Kirtan, the Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. You know, not only is with every step that this is being chanted, your karma being destroyed and good fortune being bestowed upon you and your spiritual identity being revealed and your heart opening to ecstatic love, right? And becoming an opening for it to become a temple of divine love. And not only is your mind aligning with your heart, aligning with the intellect to become one rather than dispersed in different directions, not only are your senses being fulfilled because the soul is receiving the frequency of its own true nature, right? All the benefits, but it is also a call to be in union with the divine. And that is what bhakti yoga, yoga means to yoga, to connect, to link with the divine. And bhakti is devotion, developing devotion and dedication to the divine, making your life the altar and the shrine. And it begins with, as we heard, right, speech, what, how you're speaking, how you're communicating, why so many people are practicing affirmations. And so you spoke to mantra, Scott, and I want to address that before I pause as well. You know, man means mind. Tra means through. So mantra, through the mind, that divine plane can enter, right? And so when we are engaged in mantra, this transcendental sound vibration that is beyond this world, a.k.a. God goddess in the form of sound <laughs> coming through the ear 
into the heart so that the lotus, the heart, right, can bloom like a lotus. And what is often described in our bhakti scriptures, like, so that it can bloom like a lotus, right, blooming under the cooling rays of the moon, extinguishing the forest fire of material ache, material existence. Right? And so this is the premise and the foundation. There's so much more to be said, like I could go off, but this is just, you know, to kind of address some of the points and the conversation that we're having here. What I've been taught by my guru, um, and you know, the name of my guru is Srila Bhakti Sundar Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj. We call him Govinda Maharaj. He uh, left this physical plane in 2010, um, but he exists still. And, and this, this wisdom exists in the form of the scriptures, in the form of mantra. And Guru reveals himself, herself, through passive conscious sound in the form of the scripture, through conscious sound, through mantra, and also through others who, who reveal, maybe pick up a prayer or a blessing or a, a calling that you were having in your heart. And then a person comes and mirrors that and picks up that conversation where your prayer left off, right? That's when you feel that resonance. And so uh, it's, it's by his blessing and his mercy uh, and his uh, love that I have these things to share. So I, I will not ever take any credit, but simply continue to recognize that, right, we can be channels and instruments of that divine flame. Beautiful. My mantra for the past 25 years has been, I am a clear channel for spirit to flow through. And I run that over and over and over while I'm driving and where I am a clear. And, and what's happened is I've been able to cultivate as a coach, those moments where I'm working with somebody and it's really hard stuff and I don't intellectually know where to go next. And so I'll close my eyes, I'll run the mantra and spirit will speak through me. Um, it's not necessarily channeling, although one, I guess, could say it is, but it's, it's more just kind of tapping in. Um, same thing. Um, oftentimes, I, I was asked to teach at a workshop uh, a few days ago. And before I got on stage, I hadn't decided what I was going to talk about. And I just did my mantra. And then I walked on stage and uh, what came through was very profound for people. Um, so learning to be that clear vessel uh, is a beautiful thing. I am going to play one of her beautiful songs. Um, this is from Vaidehi. Um, it's an audio. So what I'm going to do, get ready to dance, everybody, because I'm going to play it. And while I play it, let's move and well, however it inspires you. So tell us a little bit about this first one, Kamala Dala Jala. Tell us about it. Yes, thank you, Scott. Uh, so Kamala Dala Jala. So I sing and I rap in Sanskrit and also Bengali. I grew up listening to these songs and singing these songs in the temple. And it means this life is tottering like a drop of water on the leaf of a lotus. Kamala Dala Jala Jivana Dala Mala. Jalajivana Dalamala, oh, 
Kamala Tala Jala Jeevana Tala Mala Kamala Tala Jala Jeevana Tala Mala Kamala Tala Jala Jeevana Tala Mala Thank you, everybody, so much for dancing and moving. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's beautiful. Just beautiful. Uh, and I'm going to go to gallery view. Let's all twinkle. I day he for this beautiful music and a beautiful sharing. And I, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to put Wowza on. Wowza, I'm putting the spotlight on you. Um, and I'm going to keep the spotlight on um, our beautiful guests. Because I just think I was so enjoying watching you dancing. Um, and uh, there's something beautiful about the juxtaposition of our youngest member of today's audience with probably, if you don't mind, our oldest. And by the he, Wowza is such an inspiration to us. She's 85 going on 16. 86. Oh my God, you had a birthday. <laughs> Birthday. Yeah, <laughs> yeah don't take it away. away from me. <laughs> I'm proud of it. And, and that's one of the things we love about you is how proud of it you are and what an inspiration yeah. you are for us. Um, so I just thought it would be fun to have you and Vaidehi have a little chat, you know, because you both have such beautiful energy and you're both such, you're both big inspirations to us. Oh, well, Jen, this is such a delight because I was just, mwah, it was like delicious food hearing you speak. I, I have done it spontaneously. I, I have fallen in love with the, va the vowels as pipelines that bring fee fee <laughs> feelings back into language. And this extraordinary idea that it's not just that the feelings into language is actually affecting the neurons of the brain and the cells are always very social. And the moment we have an intention like mantra, uh, and I'm, you know, the spontaneousness of bringing mantra through language, and that they, they start to hook up and bring out like the stem cell work, they bring out greater innovation of thinking. And so whether we're going through the traditional ways, 
which is just so glorious because it's got thousands of years behind it. Uh, I'm always trying to find, okay, what's the essence of this so that we can move in our daily lives with this essence coming through our bodies. Yes. Thank so you. Beautiful said. Oh my gosh. And I can't believe you're 86 years old. Wow. I would have guessed that maybe you were like 60, you know, wow. That's so amazing. I, and the, jokingly, I'm like, are you using those patches? <laughs> well, yeah. You can also do it a little bit with this, this mind and this heart connection. Yeah, <laughs> of course. So important. I love what you're saying about Oh, making it a way of life. You know, there's this beautiful quote in the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is really where the Bhagavad Gita is coming from. Mm -hmm. And uh, it talks about how every word is a song. Mm -hmm. Every step is a dance. And when you are living in love, which I think if it's really awesome to see. Uh, last night I was listening to um, this webinar if you will or a master class and it was about love and it was asking the listener to set an intention and see what word came from your being mm -hmm. and the word love came from my being as my goal i was feeling what do i feel i'm lacking in and as i was searching in how i was feeling mm -hmm. i realized oh my gosh it's love it's love. I want more love in my life. And so I went to bed thinking, love is my word for this exercise. And then I wake up this morning, come to this program, and uh, Om, Om Shar, if I'm saying his name, I'm not remembering the spelling right now, I think, start singing about love. <laughs> and when you're in love, you can't help but sing and dance. That is the natural movement and this is talked about by our gurus right and and so every word is a song every step is a dance when you're living your life in love and what you're talking about making this a way of life how do you make this a way of life and how love is the ultimate panacea and medicine and it can look at the youth right the joy the love the dancing the connection the unity so and, and that's a big part of why I started making this music is because I love hip hop and rhythm. And in our traditional uh, temple songs, we play the murdanga, uh, and which is like a high end drum, and then the low end, right? And so I always thought, oh, this is like the king of hip hop. If there are any rhythmic pockets, it's in the murdanga drum. So when I started making music, people would ask, how do you know how to like rap? If, and I'm like, oh, because of the Murdunga drum. It's always like, so it's always been very easy. And so I thought, wow, music is everything. Music is medicine. Music is love for me. And I love hip hop, but I don't like the content. And so that's really the essence of why I started making music is so that like you, I could live in love <laughs> and, you know, love what I do. Um, so Thank you, Wowza. You really are a Wowzer. And I feel so inspired by your, your presence. Thank you, Scott, for um, having, having her come on so I could have a conversation with her. This is a Yeah, trip. when I saw her here and dancing, I thought, oh, we got to bring the two of you together. Because um, on the one hand, from a physical appearance, right, like there seems to be such a difference, but you both are so spirit driven. And you both are inspiring to us as what a spirit-driven life looks like. Um, and uh, I brought Omashar on here uh, since we're talking about music and love. Um, and uh, yeah, it's... Uh, <sighs> Dehi, you are an inspiration. You are so eloquent and you are able to um, transmit everything that your life, this life and all of your lives have put uh, you in this slot for some reason. And, and I, I just feel lit up by your presence. So um, I, I know you'll never stop. So I won't even say that. Um, I just look forward to your new creations and to uh, buying some of your music actually to one to help support, but to help to support me and my, in my spirit walk as well. 
you know, my, my life is one of music and passion and I've spent almost two decades traveling my music around the world because it's, it's, it's soul food and it's only a food you can give yourself. And interestingly, the Bhagavad Gita, I only read completely for the first time about three years ago. And wow, what a trip, what a book. It's phenomenal. I've you know, seen excerpts, ex, excerpts over my life, but uh, I thought I'd dive in and, and uh, I dove in and I, it was like the most gripping novel you could ever read. And it's all just pointing right into here, right into here. So thank you. I um, am hosting the final Illuminate Film Festival, and I just received a text that I need to meet with people that I'm going to be hosting, like now. <laughs> so I'm going to have to end the show today a little bit earlier than usual. Usually we would go to 1130 Pacific time, and I apologize, but I need to switch Zooms. Um, so I want to thank um, our wonderful guest, as always, Wowza. It's so great having you with us. Uh, you are such a precious new part of the Global Peace Tribe as well. So thank you so much. And uh, hopefully we'll see you next weekend. Uh, Vaidehi, I would love to have you back on the show. <clears throat> love to have you come back on uh, and share more of your wisdom and more of your music. So thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> and for the, we decided the best way for people to reach you is by going to your Instagram page. Yes. Um, if that's okay, can I put my tag? My link oh, absolutely. Tag? And you can also screen share it. If you want to pull it up, <clears throat> you could screen share it. Yeah. So let me just, I, I have two things. I'm going to paste the links and I'm sorry, we have to end early and I would love to come back. And I love what you shared, Om Shar. I would have uh, loved to respond more to what you said, but hopefully we can do a part two. Yes, um, that'd be awesome. Thank you. And uh, yes. I, I, I feel your devotion and your passion, and it's so inspiring. Thank you. Whatever I can do to inspire is really my right. aspiration. Right there. Yeah. So I'm on the screen share really quickly. Oh, I, it seems like, let's see, it's logged me out. So I placed my Instagram link um, in the chat box. I pulled and, it up. Here it is. Thank you. Yeah. Thank so you. And it, her name is Oh, go ahead. Yeah, so it's V A I D E H I A M A I R. I've placed it in the chat. And on my Instagram, you can find my link tree. And that link tree has all the links to my music. And I post in my stories all the time. I talk about my upcoming offerings. I currently have. Uh, what's called the Vocal Awakening Course, which is available for any of you that would like to join me online. I'm going to be sharing songwriting, mantra, voice mm -hmm. activation. It's a four-week series, and it's for everyone who wants to immerse themselves in this kind of practice. It's an introductory course. I'm hosting it in Santa Cruz at Pleasure Point Yoga, where I teach regularly, where I host Kirtan Circles, but it's also going to be live streamed, so you can join that way and the links are available in my stories. And I also posted a link for some spiritual books from our website, and you can download any of those books for free. And I recommend taking a look at the Bhagavad Gita that we have available there. And if you have any questions, please follow me on Instagram and or Facebook. Um, you can also email me at vaidehiamir at gmail.com. I'd love to be in touch with you. I'd love to help answer any questions you have about mantra, bhakti yoga, kirtan, spiritual life, whatever I can do to inspire. And I also create these sacred containers so you can join me. So there's many ways to stay connected. Um, and I, I look forward to seeing all of you popping up in the different channels. And I can't wait to come back on again and share again. Scott, thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much to each and every one of you for dancing. You literally made my morning and my day. I've had a pretty interesting week. So I'm really grateful for this show and this experience. You've nurtured my heart in ways you cannot even imagine. And Vaidehi, I will be in touch with you because I want to book you for one of my shows in December um, so we can get more of you. And um, thank you so, so much. Um, and thank you everybody for being with us. I apologize for the quick 
exit next weekend um trish is coming back on friday night we're going to be doing a show all about how to manage insecurity jealousy some of the hard things that come up that's going to be on friday night and then on saturday night um you know once every month or two i collaborate with um uh uh, Teresa Collins and the Global Coherence Pulse, and it's going to be one of those shows, and it's all about the art and science of love, and uh, presenters are going to include Dr. Rulin Chu and members of Master Shah's core team, um, and so it's going to be very, very powerful, and then on our Sacred Sunday show uh, next week, um, it's going to be uh, meeting two women that have written books all about the goddess. Um, and so that's going to be next weekend. We don't have our posters yet, but we'll have them. And of course, all of you that have registered, you'll get emails with the replays, the recordings from this weekend shows, and of course, uh, information about what's going to be happening next week. So thank you, everybody. Let's go to gallery view for one last uh, shot to see everybody. Uh, thank you, everybody. And yes, Jeffrey, Lovolution is the solution. Thank you for always reminding us of that. Uh, thank you, Atira. I'm sorry we didn't get a chance to go back to you, but thank you for your offer. Yes, yes, yes. And we will be talking in the future about upcoming retreats. And make sure you all get your life wave X39s. All right. Take care, everybody. We all want to look like Wowza when we're 86 years old. And the life wave is going to help us with that. Take care, everybody. Much love. Thank you.